Hello, I'm Dennis Pullis. Welcome to another Open Philosophy video. In this video, we will be continuing our discussion of knowledge from the last time. In the next few videos, we will consider knowledge as a human experience, as a relationship, as a sign of what is known, as causally engendered, as informative, and as true. So let's get on with knowledge as a human experience. It's pretty obvious that knowing names a human experience. It's a word we use to describe a certain kind of thing that human beings do. We know. When we doubt that we know, we're doubting that we experience what we do in fact experience. So it's silly, in fact ridiculous, to doubt that humans know. When we say that we doubt that humans know, what we mean is not that we doubt that there is an experience that we call knowing, but we doubt that some construct, some model that we've made of what it is to know, agrees with our experience. So what we're doubting is not that we know, what we're doubting is the model that we've constructed. Usually the model involves a lot more completeness than our experience has we consider knowing to be some kind of perfect activity in which we exhaust all that is to be grasped in whatever it is that we're considering. And, of course, human beings don't have that kind of knowledge. There are always new things that we can discover. We know what we know, but there is a great deal that remains mysterious and that we don't know. The problem here is what I call the omniscience fallacy. It's using divine knowledge, which is exhaustive, as a model for human knowledge. And of course, that's just plain silly. Human beings don't know in the same way as God knows. And it's ridiculous to expect us to do so. So the first thing that we have to remember about knowledge is that it's a human activity and subject to all of the limitations and foibles that human activities are prey to. Now let's consider a simple example. Suppose that we're looking at a little grain of salt. It looks like a white translucent cube and that's what we mean when we say we know we're seeing a grain of salt. Seeing a grain of salt doesn't exhaust what is to be known about the salt. We can taste it and then immediately we have some new dimension that we've added, the taste. Or we can analyze it chemically and find out that it consists of a matrix of sodium and chlorine atoms in a cubic array. Perhaps we can examine it neurophysiologically and find out that our neural net is doing edge enhancement, and so on. We might also add some skeptical hypotheses. We might follow Descartes in hypothesizing that a demon is causing us to see the grain of salt, or we might follow the hypothesis in the Matrix movie and assume that we're being deceived by computers. But these hypotheses need to be tested in the same way as any hypothesis. If they're not falsifiable, they're not scientific. And, by definition, hypotheses such as that of Descartes and in the Matrix movie are not falsifiable, and so they're mere empty speculations with no scientific legitimacy. Next time we'll be continuing our discussion of knowledge by considering knowledge as a relationship. Thank you for watching.